there is Dating is complicated, but for teenagers, it is uncharted territory. Our next guest is on a mission to build a culture of respect and give parents and kids the tools they need to make smart decisions about dating. Mike Domish is the founder of the Date Safe Project and author of this book. It's called Can I Kiss You? He became inspired to change society after his sister was sexually assaulted in 1989. And today, Mike speaks to tens of thousands of people around the world every year. And in just a couple of minutes, we're going to tell you about a special event tonight that you can attend with your kids or by yourself for free. Good to see you. Thanks for having me back. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think a lot of people um, remember you from being on the show, but for those who don't, I'd love to kind of, you just give a, a quick background of how you came to do what you do. Absolutely. 1989, I grew up here in Wisconsin mm -hmm. and I was away at college and I received a phone call that my sister had been raped. And that is what changed my life forever. Uh, one, the trauma of trying to deal with, figure that all out, and then seeing her strength her courage it would inspire me to want to speak out and do something about this. And now we're 30 years later almost. Yeah. Uh, and here we are doing this work in high schools, middle schools, colleges and corporations around the world. Yeah. What kind of work are you talking about? What do you what is the message that you're giving to these kids? Yeah, when we're working with middle schools and high schools and parents, we're talking about how to teach your kids how to respect their boundaries, how to be able to use their voice to declare their boundaries very succinctly. Also how to honor their partner's boundaries. Mm -hmm. So how to ask first to respect the answer. Or you're at a party and you see something happening where somebody's using alcohol or drugs to try to get somebody into a sexual situation, how to step in and really intervene and stop that from happening. And then lastly, how to create a supportive environment so survivors can come forward. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a parent out there and this has ever happened to your kid, you want to make sure they can feel safe coming to you. Most parents do the opposite. Yeah. They actually put like a, if this, anybody ever touches you, I'll kill, kill them. Mm -hmm. Right. And that scares the kid from coming forward. We want to open that up. Yeah, I, I think you know, you've been doing this for a long time. You've been here on the show for a long time. Yes. And, and I can imagine that dating has changed over the decades. So let's talk a little bit about what you've seen because I, I, I think kids are, are much more um, open, but also, and a lot more things are exposed these days. So there's more conversation about it. But I wonder what you're really seeing in the trenches of the schools and the colleges and really talking to kids. Well, and you just brought it up. It's the impact of how much more is open now. Yeah. And because openness is good, that's healthy. If we're talking, we Stops can address the cycle, it. Right? That's Silence. right. However, if it's open and we're not talking, then the openness, what happens is the students see so much, they're exposed to so much, they think that what they're being exposed to is the norm. Mm. And because we're not talking as parents in schools, what happens is they think, oh, this is how I'm supposed to behave. And so they follow that path, which is really unhealthy. And so what we want to do is go, hey, we have a more open culture. I, as a parent, I need to be way more open now because I need to help them see that's not the right path. Even though it's exposed, it doesn't mean it's right. It's us as right. parents trying to catch up with how open they are. Yes, and one of the big mistakes parents make is they think, well, you know, times have changed so much, I can't relate. The right. fact is most of dating hasn't actually changed. And a lot of sex is still the same. Yes. You, you still get nervous, right? Works the same way. <laughs> yeah. You know what? The way they were pressuring people to have sex 40 years ago, same way they're being pressured yeah. today. Right. That hasn't changed. Right. Using alcohol to get somebody to do something. There are married people doing that today. They right. were doing it 40 years ago. That hasn't changed. So you have a lot in common with your kid as far as the culture they live in and the culture you lived in. One thing I think has changed, though, and what you were talking about being exposed to so much more is pornography. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. How does that play into it? Because kids, I mean, it seems like they could just on a click get whatever Easy. they want. Yeah. On their, on their handheld device. Yeah. And what's interesting is parents are like, oh, this generation so perverted, all this pornography. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I bet every parent out there can name the three magazines Has it had a that they knew that somebody's dad, it was yes. always dads that were supposed to have the magazine, uh, somebody's dad had, and they can name it in an instant. Absolutely. So what we have to first realize is our kids are no more perverted than we were. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really important topic. And that's not a race you want to win. No, no it's no, not. Like, it's no, not. no, we were. No. Yeah. The difference is we didn't have the access. Yeah. And if we did, are we kidding ourselves that we wouldn't have peaked? We wouldn't have looked at that, all that online access. So what we want to talk about is what's the impact of all that access? Mm -hmm. Because we want to help the kids see it through a different lens. Yeah. And so the key is for years it was you talk about pornography, it leads to violence. Well, kids don't relate to that. Mm -hmm. So what you say is, all right, if you've never seen pornography, how do you view a sexual partner's body? Yeah. Versus once you've seen it, pornography, how do you view a sexual partner's body? And kids admit, once I've seen it, I judge the body. Oh. But without having seen pornography, I just see this body. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. This is incredible. Yeah. I see the gift for what it is. Mm -hmm. But I lose the gift the more I watch pornography. 
that's an important lens for them to realize mm -hmm. that, hey, this is not what you should expect as a norm. Yeah. Well, I, I think it can desensitize too to, to certain acts and things like that that you think may be normal in a loving relationship that maybe are or are not. Yeah, know? because it's video now where we had still pictures for the right, most part. Right, and you weren't seeing as graphic. Yeah, it's video, so they think, well, that's how it's done. It's right. video right. versus. And I'm supposed to act like that. Yeah, yeah right. I'm supposed to sound it's like that scary. even, which yep. is like that's not natural actually for no, most people. There right. are people it could be for, and so They're actors. Want, yes, and they admit we don't do at home what we do on film. Right. Because at home we do it for pleasure. That's not what we do for pleasure. Right. But kids don't hear that. They're just watching what they're watching. Right. So it's helping them get a realistic understanding. So how do we teach our kids to say no? Because especially when they're being pressured, especially when they've seen a lot of these things or, or they think that that may be the norm, how do we teach them that no is okay and, and no is oftentimes the right answer. You know, Tiffany and Katrina, this is really important. Parents tend to say, just say no. If you don't want to just say no. Right. What they forget is the reason their kid's not saying no. The reason their kid's not saying no is because they're afraid to hurt their partner's feelings. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. High schoolers, I'll say, are I thought maybe it was to be embarrassed or, no. or they didn't want other or people accepted. to think that no, they No, it's you know. none of that, actually. When you're in front of a high school audience and I say, are people saying yes to things they don't want to do sexually? They'll yell yes. Really? Dramatically. And I'll say why. And it's overwhelmingly don't want to hurt their feelings. Yeah. Wow. Everybody's too polite. Yeah. And so if I say no, that's going to hurt their feelings. So what we have to teach our kids is that the word no is never mean. Yeah. It's never mean to say right. no. That's a powerful lesson. You'd be amazed how many kids afterwards write us and say no ne is never mean. Mm -hmm. I needed to hear that. No is yes. never mean. Right. And saying and no. And my feelings are valid. Yeah, yeah. That's just it. Saying no empowers me. It's the kindest thing I can do for me and for my partner because now I'm respect. not misleading them. I'm not lying to them that I want to do something I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm being honest. That's respect. Yeah. Like so it's really parent, important. Every teenager needs to come and see you. And you can do it tonight for free. It's at Green Day. So you can learn more about the Date Safe Project and Safer Choices, helping equip your kids with specific skills. Again, 6 o'clock, free Greendale High Schools, where you can see Mike um, speak. And you're probably going to learn a lot. Thanks a for lot. Being here, Thank you. Thank so you both much. for having me here. I appreciate it. Great.